This is about as remote as I've ever been on the longest solo trip I've ever done. Behind me is the train bridge in which I came in on, but after that, the only way out of here is by boat or by float plane. I'm in Wabakimi, and it was a pretty wild journey just getting here. I'll tell you all about that a little bit later, but we should get on the water because I'm sure we have a pretty wild journey ahead. Small walleye. In all honesty, I can't be bothered to cook it tonight because uh, on Friday I gotta get some sleep, so we're gonna let that one go. So happy to be here. This almost didn't happen. There was a few moments yesterday where I was thinking that was it, but uh, but we're here. I'll tell you guys a little bit later. I know I keep saying that, but. I just need a little bit of time to process and today's not the day for me to be telling stories. Pretty fish, eh? Not the best campsite, pretty scraggly. Fallen down logs everywhere, a few flat spots, and uh, some widow makers. Though I've checked the ones that are near my tent and they're fine. They're not gonna fall over. This is what we got. A couple minutes, 30, 40 minutes of sunlight left. I'm gonna get a fire going, cook some dinner. Hungry. This has been a fiasco. I grabbed this bush camp and then I used my tarp as a ground sheet underneath my tent in order to protect it from the brush. And then it started raining, so I used my canoe as the tarp to protect all my stuff. Absolute gong show at the moment. I'm fried, can't think straight. Just gonna get some food into me. And uh, go to bed. This is all frost. All the condensation on the inside of the tent is frozen, meaning uh, it's uh, it's cold. Yeah, it got really cold last night. Hopefully things warm up today because uh, I have a lot of stuff to dry off. Before we get going on the day, I just kind of wanted to you know, let everybody know where I'm at. I think a lot of people pointed out in the comments that they thought that I was a little off last couple months and that was very true. I was, I wasn't quite myself. I was, uh, I was not my best. I was having big bouts of anxiety. I was having intrusive thoughts. I was having it wasn't a bad place, but it was not my best place. And I've been there before, years ago. Years and years ago when I, uh, and I think that's when I started drinking heavily. And for those who don't know my story, I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm sober from drugs and alcohol for the last close to three years now, because I had been a very heavy drinker and, and a poly user. Upon reflection, I think what led me to that in the first place was my negative thinking and my toxic mental state. I was having ruminating thoughts, negative, invasive, ruminating thoughts. And, and in the last few months, I was experiencing those again. I would just get stuck in these thought patterns and they would just loop, 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 leading to intense anxiety and just depletion, absolute depletion. I was so depleted. And I know some people noticed, and I talked with a lot of people about it. And uh, I'm happy to say that I've been doing a lot better, a lot better. And I contribute that to, well, a bunch of things, you know, t talking with friends and family, journaling, but more than that, therapy and daily meditation. Just gonna throw on a guided meditation. 
and get right into it. in through the nose and out through the mouth. Look at that campsite, uh, 2 out of 10. <laughs> it was really bad. We're gonna go for it. So funny. Literally the same noise I make when I make love. Nature's so mysterious. So I just got a message from John on my inReach. He's also out camping. He says, You in Wabakimi now, old pal? I'm in the northwest corner of Davies Lake. Sure it's a chilly morning, don't you know? God, I hate that guy. down. There's a set of rapids here. It looks runnable, but the map says do not run. I don't see anything unrunnable about this. Pretty simple. Coming up is a falls that says do not run and it has skull and crossbones. I'll show you guys on the map. These were supplied to me by Wabakimi Outfitters. Bruce over there did an excellent job making all these maps, but he did ask me not to give you guys a play-by-play -play, um, because these are his maps and uh, I have to respect that, but I'll show you how detailed they are. That's about it. See, this is what we're coming up to. Haircut reveal. <laughs> no. <laughs> Max and I took turns snipping at it and then I just buzzed the sides. It looks terrible, but whatever, what do you do, right? I guess you I guess you go to a barber. Tell him to chop off your mullet. certainly looks runnable, but not being this remote by myself. So we're gonna pour. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm just back paddling and going nice and slow because, because why not? Now it does look like it picks up quite a bit down there. I'm gonna eddy out right here on the right. And then uh, I can always carry the canoe if that looks too bad, but honestly, it doesn't look too bad. That's yeah, just big waves. Yeah, there we go. Whee! Awesome. Let's catch ourselves a fish. Oh, there's there's one. <laughs> or is that a log? Oh, it's a big pike. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Chill, 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 chill. Well, you saw him, didn't you? <laughs> it's gone now. <gasps> oh, dang, those things are slippery. We weren't gonna keep them. We were looking for walleye to eat. Mmm, pike. I got. Dude. All right. Get in the water. Be gone with you. <laughs> yeah, all right. Ignore that. Oh, we got another one on. Okay, well, there's lots of pike here. <laughs> no, is it? Okay. All right, look, a pike. We did it. All right, be gone with you. Yeah, those things are slippery. I, I've been catching pike for three years now and uh, still haven't learned how slippery those things are. And they're, they're feisty little 
bastards. They must be well fed here. Whoa, we breached. I have to do another pike right at the boat. Ooh, this one's good too. Here we go. There's a pike. One on the board. Or a few on the board. Huh. Alright, let's get to the water. Whoa, off like a torpedo! Alright, we got we got one. We got a good sized walleye, we're gonna keep this one. Beautiful. Dinner. <laughs> I'm in paradise. Woo! It's so beautiful out here. And the fishing's awesome. Yeah, after that bushy, wet, rainy, stuffy, awful campsite from yesterday and the condition that I was in, being so exhausted, rolling up to this campsite, on top of a rock with a big expansive view. All the space in the world to spread out all my stuff to dry it out, cook a fish and feed my belly. Really makes you appreciate Ooh. a good campsite. Nice. Yeah, yesterday's was poor, poor, poor. This one, excellent. And the fish, mm-mm-mm, mm-mm-mm. One thing I learned is that meditation, or when I used to think about meditation, I used to think it was clearing your mind of thoughts, not thinking, you know, just being in a, in a state of nothingness. But it's not necessarily what it is. It's just the recognition of thoughts. It's the awareness, that's what it is, it's awareness. So as a thought comes in, you recognize that you're thinking and allowing that thought to pass and then putting your awareness on something else, say the breath. I think it's just called mindfulness, really. And so meditation has been so beneficial for me because it's just strengthening that muscle, the muscle of the mind, and just being aware that these thoughts that I'm feeling and experiencing are temporary and I don't need to latch onto them. Anyways, we're gonna do uh, another guided meditation this morning. When you're ready. And what a place to do it. Usually when we experience a sense of discomfort or pain, the tendency is to push against it. And yet when we do that, we actually create more tension. So when we train the mind, we kind of flip that around. Instead, we try and move closer towards it. It's almost as though we're sort of sinking down into the pain, into the discomfort. And funny enough, when we do that, we usually find a greater sense of and a greater understanding of how the body and mind interact. So here's an overview of the route. We uh, got on the train at Armstrong, took the train here to Allenwater Bridge, and then the rest of the route is coming up the Allenwater to Wabakimi Lake, down the series of lakes, down to the Kopka River, and then we're going to take the Kopka back out where we're gonna meet up with the outfitter and uh, get our car. I've seen this behavior before in ducks. If you get close to uh, a mama and its chicks, the mama will often act uh, hurt and kind of go off and try to distract you from going after the little chicklets. As the little babies. So I'm guessing these two these two otters are parents and their young is around and the one is just kind of hey look at me come after me come after me and it's making these noises and trying to lure me away from their young 
and uh, little does it know that I'm actually just trying to make, make my way up this lake here. So I'm gonna go around this otter, let him go back to his young because uh, they did their job. I'm not gonna eat his babies today. Maybe another day I'll eat them. Seven portages between me and what's marked on the map as a really, really good campsite. Seven portages, including two hefty ones, the longest being about a mile. It's 12.30, we have to about seven before we really need to call it quits. That's my goal for the day. stuff. Oh, I didn't like that one one bit. Honey garlic chicken and some vegetables. Hmm, smells good. I'm getting it everywhere, but it's good. what a night sky is supposed to feel like. True darkness, not a light to be seen anywhere. Except for the stars above and the northern lights display. Not even a moon. Flawless. Pure, natural darkness. and the northern lights were beautiful last day. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. So as I've been learning to meditate, I, I started off by just searching around YouTube, finding guided meditations, and while I found a few that were okay, they were pretty good and I learned a bit, it wasn't until I found the Headspace app that my understanding and my learning accelerated I and mean, while I'm still a noob and that's okay like I accept that meditation is not a destination it's a practice while that's the case I found that my understanding has deepened by having an instructor and my instructor is Andy on the Headspace app and I found that by being consistent which it's harder to be consistent when you don't have a routine in fact it's impossible the Headspace app helps you form that routine. I think if anybody's serious about meditation, and I think most people should be, I'm very happy to say that Headspace has sponsored this video and they're offering everybody that's watching a 60 day free trial with the link down in the description. So if you're like me and you have stress and anxiety or maybe you just wanna hone your thinking a little better, 
and be more in touch with your thoughts, there's no better way to do that than through meditation. And in my personal opinion, there's no easier way to learn about meditation and start a daily practice than by using Headspace. Sixty day free trial guys, I'm telling you. We should get going on the day though. I also I have some bad news, but I also have some great news. So let's go. Yeah, the bad news and the great news. So the bad news is I can't find my saw anywhere. I woke up this morning and I was looking for it to uh, saw some wood, process some wood for the fire. And I realized I haven't used it since the first day. Hopefully it turns up somewhere, but chances are it's gone. But the great news is I'm alive and very well. So I think one thing that you guys are unaware of is that this video was supposed to have a lot of drone footage, like an absolute ton of drone footage. The entire first day, mostly drone, all the rapids, drone. I ran about, I don't know, eight to 10 sets of rapids and I filmed it all with the drone and then beautiful shots here and there over the last few days. Lots of drone footage was supposed to be scattered throughout this video, but unfortunately about 10 minutes ago, my drone malfunctioned. One of the props wasn't spinning, but all the rest were, and the drone just right into the lake. I uh, was unable to retrieve it, so uh, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Oh, it's so devastating. Oh. oh, all that footage, that sweet, sweet footage. Just part of the game we play, right? I'm quite blown away that of all the ways the drone finally died, it was not pilot error, it, it malfunctioned itself. Moment of silence for the drone. Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. That is how you know you'll go on Once more You'll open the door And I know that my heart will go on Here, far, wherever you Cause I know that in my dreams I'll see you go on and on. Rest in peace, my drone friend. Alright, let's get on a fishing. I haven't fished in days now. I need to get a fish. That's a fish, isn't it? Yeah, that's a fish, that's a tugging. Easy, easy does it. 
get in this net. Oh, that's a big pipe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Woo! <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Yo, that was nuts. You missed that, but oh my god, that thing tried to swim out. Oh my god! Oh, do you see that? Okay, you need to chill. There we go. That's a pike. Okay, pike in the boat. Pike in the boat. Well, it's only like five o'clock. It's a little early for me to be calling camp. Oh, you know, it's an appropriate time. Yesterday I called camp at seven, is all I'm saying. But yesterday was a push day. Anyways, rain's coming down. So I might as well just set up camp here. Maybe get a little bit cozied in, cause uh, didn't seem to be letting up. And uh, this is as good a place as any. So, out of the wet socks, into the dry Crocs. Oh, and by the way, neoprene socks are awesome. Bag brood is perfect for days where you are lazy. Ooh, hot. Mm. Every time I eat ginger, I never know if I like it or not. Like, do I love it? Do I just like it? Do I not like it? Hard to tell. I guess I like it. Pretty perched, so I'm going to bed. But I love you. So I'll see you in the morning. Meditation's hard, <laughs> it's really, but the beautiful part is that it's a practice, so no matter what, as long as you're trying, you're still meditating. Feeling the coffee. Fish on. Oh. Wow. Okay. Is that really a fish? Because that feels that feels heavy. Oh jeez. What? What in the Lord? It's gotta be a pike. Off that point. That can't be a real animal. This cannot be a real creature. <sighs> what in God's name is that thing? No! Oh, it was so big. It was so big. Like, it was the biggest fish I've ever seen. Wow, that was exciting.
<laughs> Holy crap, that was cool. Ooh. That feels pretty heavy too. I don't think anything will be as big as that last one, but a boy can dream. Oh. Still a good sized pike. Relax. Oh. Pretty chunky. Hello. All right. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Pike! Pike! That good old sun. Good to see you, bud. I miss you. He's always there, even behind the grayest of grayest of clouds. The sun and the beautiful blue sky is always there. If I wasn't so remote and maybe of us with a group of people, that falls would be pretty fun to run. But that's not happening on this trip. The sneak route, that's totally feasible, but the consequences of messing up and coming over the falls could be catastrophic. So uh, that's not happening. Yeah, and if I learned anything from the trip just coming up here, is that things can go wrong just like that. And if you're not being careful, you can end up in a really, really crappy situation really quickly really quickly yeah that's a story i still got to tell you guys all about but uh it's gonna have to wait for now let's finish off this portage and uh get on a fishing again This 
is officially the furthest point north on the trip. From now on, I'll be heading south, southeast. Mostly south. I don't know where this rain came from, but it's uh, heavy. <laughs> I should have got to camp way earlier. So we're doing a simple meal again tonight. We uh, we don't have time, we don't have firewood. We're just gonna do another dehydrated uh, prepackaged meal. Sweet and sour grilled chicken. Oh man, I'm hungry. Good morning, everyone. It rained all night. Well, on and off, but continued to rain. Leaves me to believe that it'll probably rain today, too. But uh, on the map, it says that it's a very pretty day, the section that we're heading into, so looking forward to that. Let's get some breakfast going. I always carry a fire starter just in case. Today's one of those days where it's gonna come in handy. I didn't really show it. But that fire took me a lot longer to get going than I expected. Pre-making wraps again for lunch. Quick tip for you guys today, if you find yourself on the Canadian Shield where everything's bedrock and you're looking for a place to do your morning business, look no further than a low-lying area with lots of moss perfect because in these low-lying areas this is where all the debris and dirt and uh, stuff settles because it sheds off the higher rocky areas where it's impossible to dig a hole so down in these lower line areas there's enough debris for you guys to dig yourself a six inch hole do your business and uh, use even some of that moss as a nice little moist towelette as uh, a way of freshening Ooh. up make sure you cover up your stuff and uh, you're good to go Anyways, that's just a quick poop tip for you guys today. If you guys like that poop tip, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe for more poop tips in the future. Guy. Come here. I'm not gonna hurt you.
Yeah. The northern pike, they got more heart in them. I like them southern pike. Limp, limp dick southern pike. <laughs> Why? Too small to eat. So we're just, whoa, oh geez, sorry. I'm just gonna let him go. Cool. I haven't caught a walleye in a while. Is this the same guy? Welcome back, bud. Good to see ya. I'm guessing a walleye. It's the way he was. Should we eat it? That's a good size uh, walleye for me. All right, let's do this portage around this falls and uh, carry on. We're at the northern point of Smooth Rock Lake and apparently there's caribou around here. Accidentally dropped a rock on one of the tent poles here. So that's broken. Can you see that? Yeah, not good. So I'm gonna use one of the tent poles, tent stakes, and some duct tape, and that should be pretty good. There we go, good as new. Honestly, I don't trust the weather around here. It's just been dumping randomly and I don't want to get all my stuff wet. Thank you! Not the best day for a swim, in fact it's quite cold, but uh, I feel really gross so I kind of want to go for a swim. Woo. Woo. All right. Clean as a whistle. Clean as a whistle. It feels so good to have had that little swim. Get nice and clean and then jump into some dry clothes. Oh, it's just so good. We're getting a little crazy and we're doing fish pizza tonight. It's amazing that you can just pull up fresh meat from the from the water and just eat it right here at, at camp. What a treat. Sometimes I think about what it means to be Canadian. You know, when you think of Canadian imagery, it's usually the beaver or hockey, something along those lines. You know, I, I often get comments from people all over the world saying how lucky we are here in Canada to have such amazing places we can come visit, some such natural places that are accessible to everyone. And I get that from people all over Europe, people from Asia, people from South America, all over, even parts of the USA. There's something about the Canadian wilderness that is just so special. There's so much remote wilderness here that is very accessible. Like I am day six of a multi-day canoe trip and I have not seen a single person. It's incredible. A huge part of Canadian identity for me, and I, th I was thinking about this on this trip, is our access to wilderness. Not many places have that. In fact, there's very few places that have such amazing access to world-class wilderness as Canadians do. And I'm very proud of that, and I'm very grateful for that. 
Tell me something about what you love about where you live. Leave it down in the comments. Canada has some crap too, you know, there's a lot of crap here. And it's cold as heck and the bugs are horrible. Backcountry gourmet. Ooh la la. Hmm. Good morning, y'all. Beautiful morning. Well rested. Let's go get breakfast into us. And then uh, get on a paddling. <laughs> Good morning, son! Good to see ya! Making our way down Smooth Rock Lake, we're actually doing great timing right now, and it's it's about lunchtime and just in time because we're approaching Spaghetti Island, which is marked here on the map. My outfitter Bruce told me that every time they're in the area, they come here to eat spaghetti, so I have to come eat here because it's tradition. But uh, I don't have spaghetti; I have chicken Alfredo uh, fettuccine, so uh, that'll have to do. So the fettuccine Alfredo is just the way I like it—a little underhydrated, a little stale. A little runny, but uh, still pretty delicious. As is tradition on Spaghetti Island, is you make a spaghetti offering to the spaghetti gods. Mmm, mmm, spaghetti. Wait, what's this? It's fettuccine alfredo. Mmm, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, right, it's good. Sacrifice your life to me. No, 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 I'm not gonna do that. Just take it. Just Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Later. The Smooth Rock Lake is done. That took seven hours from our campsite this morning. <laughs> nice easy paddle, but long and tedious. Anyways, we are at a kilometer long portage. It looks like from now till we get to the Kopka River watershed, that we're gonna be heading up river. Different change of pace, but I'm sure the fishing will be good. So I'm looking forward to that. This has to be the best maintained portage trail of the whole trip so far. It's immaculate. Fish is fighting like a dink. It's actually not a bad sized fish. How did they get that out like that? Probably, I probably just, as they're pulling away, I just gotta. Hmm. You did good. It's not your fault. You did good. Sweet home. So tonight we're doing a bit of a different one. It's a chicken, spinach, and mushroom risotto. The mushrooms I actually harvested myself from the wild, they're lobster mushrooms, which makes this pretty special and interesting. If you were to ask me what a risotto was, you had a gun to my head, and you're like, what's a risotto? I'd 
probably turn that gun back on you and shoot you in the foot and tell you to stop asking stupid questions because I actually have no idea what a risotto is. So, guess we'll never know. I got a little bit of hot chocolate because why not? It's a hot chocolate kind of night. Take a little gander. Ooh, smells mushroomy. Do we like it? No. About old bay seasoning. Everybody talks about this stuff. Everybody's like, oh yeah, just throw some old bay on it. In, in reference to absolutely everything. So, we're gonna throw some old bay on this. See how that does. No, it's okay. But this stuff has been around since the beginning of time. Oh, okay, that's killer. <laughs> it just can't go wrong with that. Washroom and, and like it. Look at this. Wow, that's so lucky. Good morning, everyone. Ah, I'm fried today. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm gonna go real slow. I might not cover much ground, but I feel pretty exhausted today. It's supposed to be a pretty day. Maybe we'll just fish the falls and uh, go to where we get. Because uh, I think a couple more days of this, I'll be dragging my butt around. Yeah, I'm not gonna use my hands on those because uh, that's how you get a hook through the hand, you know? You're free! So we just triple carried around three separate little falls. Falls are little rapids or streams, whatever they were. Just trying to conserve energy because I am pooped today. I think it's gonna be a short day. I'm probably gonna rest it out. I think my body needs it. Today and tomorrow there's headwinds in the direction that I'm heading southeast, so I can use all the help I can get. We'll keep that, we'll eat that. Probably one of the smallest walleyes I've caught yet, but let's get eaten. Let's get another. Here, got another one. Beautiful fish. It's two, that'll be good eating. I'm gonna fish for a little bit because it's kind of nice. And then uh, we'll put these guys up for lunch in like five, ten minutes. And for lunch. There's a campsite here, and it has this flay board.
kind of interesting because just two years ago, around this time, actually probably very similar week to this, two years ago, John and I were on a trip at a place not too far from here, St. Raphael Signature Site. That was our first trip together. And I think on that trip, it was the first time I caught an eight walleye, which is pretty cool. Now I'm pulling them up from, from the lake and cooking them myself. I'm a man grown now. That trip was pretty cool. Got to know John and uh, we saw a bunch of wildlife, including moose, bear, and uh, woodland caribou. This trip is uh, very similar vibes. It's a li I kind of enjoy this trip a little bit more just because John's not here, you know? But uh, I'm only joking. John's a good buddy of mine. And he's always a uh, great company. This is phenomenal, by the way. Mm. I think that was some of the best fish I've ever had. So good. very far today. In fact, I think we only made it about a quarter of the distance that we did yesterday. But I needed it. I was I was pretty beat. So I uh, I triple carried all my stuff and I'll show you what that means in a sec. Usually I double carry. But I just took it really really slow and enjoyed myself and had a nice pace to the day. In fact, I'd say today was probably one of the most enjoyable days of the trip so far. All right, here's a crude example of what it means to single, double, and triple carry um, all your gear. So I'm the lighter. Oh, I'm the lighter here. This is my canoe, the kind bar. These are my two bags. So I arrive in my canoe to the beginning of the portage. Here's the end. Then I would usually carry my canoe to the end, walk back, get my bags, and come all the way to the end. And then I would continue on my way. Sometimes if the portage was really long, I would do one load halfway, come back, get the next load, and leapfrog it, come back, leapfrog it all the way to the end. And that's just to save energy and, and break up the trip. Today, because I was feeling extra tired, I would portage three times. So that means I had to come back twice all the way. So it was five trips total. And uh, that saved me a lot of energy today. It was very low energy. It was uh, quite nice. But it makes me think, what would it be like to single carry all my stuff on one of these portages? It means I don't have to go back, which is an obvious uh, benefit, but I have a ton of stuff with me, like an absolute ton. It's all pretty heavy. So uh, it'd be kind of a, kind of, <laughs> I'm really interested to see what would happen if I tried to single carry everything. Uh, so I'm gonna try that on a portage later in this trip. Um, yeah, stay tuned for that. I think pizzas are always gonna be the best camping food. They are a staple. Yeah, he said it, but I think today was my favorite. It was just so mellow. Oh my god. <laughs> You can see them above us. <laughs> it's insane. Whoa. Oh my god, they're about as good as I've ever seen them. <laughs> oh yeah. On a clear, moonless night. I just can't believe them above us. That is insane.
Look at that. It's like a Rorschach. Morning, everyone. Oh. I slept fine. It was the best sleep oh, I've ever had, but was it the worst? Oh. back up to the railway tracks again. This is the railway tracks. We started here at the Allen Water, Allen Water River and the Allen Water Bridge. Came all the way up to Lake Wabikimi and now we're back at the railway tracks and we're gonna continue past them under the Kopka River. So apparently there's a portage around here and it can be treacherous and, and there might be a tunnel. So we're gonna figure that one out. There's the alternate route coming up that way and down that way. These headwinds are tedious. This is one of the only bits of cover that I found over the last two kilometers. I have a um, big stretch of open water so I can hide behind an island. Not fun going, but we're making progress, slow and steady, and um, should be at camp before we know it. This seagull's just been hanging out. He was uh, flying around my head a minute ago, and then he came and landed. I wonder why he's following me. Probably food. Probably thinks I have food. I was just taking a break and he came and landed within like, I don't know, three feet of me? You are a curious little thing. Who sent you? Are you working with the government? Hello again. Which way to the portage? That way? Okay.
peaceful when everything chills out. Today was tough with those headwinds. We have more of that tomorrow. Fortunately though, we have the prettiest spot on the trip coming up. So stay tuned for that. Oh yeah, I still have to tell you the story of why this trip almost didn't even happen. Yeah, so more to come. And oh yeah, I'm gonna try to single carry all my gear in one portage. Lots to come. Hey, I mean, you made it this far in the video. Might as well just keep watching to the end. Anyways, see you guys in the morning. I'm heading to sleep. Good morning, everyone. Day 10. We did it. Double digits. <laughs> yep. We did it. It's getting darker out each morning. I mean, being out here for 10 days, you can tell that the sun's just rising just a little bit later every day. Winter's coming. Oh. Today might be the first day of fall as well. Hey bear! I'm like, that's a big beaver. <laughs> Swimming in the water. No, it was a bear. It was a black bear. All right, spider warning. This thing is huge. It's about as big as they get in Canada. Or at least Ontario. Yeah, that's a warning if you're afraid of spiders. Oh, it's so creepy. The question is, do I poke it? And the answer is most certainly. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Jesus. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I'm not even afraid of spiders and that thing's freaky as hell. All right, one more poke and then we'll be on our way. Ooh, wow, that's cool. He's like, why are you poking me? All right, I'll leave you alone. Oh, I got my heart boiling. <laughs> that bear, nothing. It was just like, oh, hey, Mr. Bear. There's a tiny little spider. Ah, really squeamish. <laughs> I'm not even afraid of spiders, and that thing is scary. All right, later, dude. a nice relaxing morning so I figured we'd switch gears at this point and uh, do something a little bit more chaotic this is a nice short portage so if I'm gonna try to single carry all my gear over one portage might as well be this one all right all this stuff is lashed into the canoe so I usually keep it and then of course I got these bags my camera box First. Oh. Oh.
All right, wedged it up in a tree. That might help me. Okay. Oh, this is how I die. Oh. I don't even know how it's on there, but it's on there. Let's go! Woo! Oh, that was dumb. But it was glorious. Worth every second. Woo. So th this happened just a few minutes ago. I'm just casually carrying my canoe. And uh, I remember that on the map, there's an area that's coming up that says Cougar with a question mark meaning that there was probably a cougar sighting in the area. And I know that Northern Ontario does have cougars because uh, they've been spotted on trail cams. There's not sure how many there are, but there are cougars in, in Northern Ontario, which is pretty wild. So I'm casually carrying my canoe and I look down and on this rock, there is predator scat, fresh predator scat. So, <laughs> I don't know exactly what the pre pre which predator it was, but there's fur in it. It's quite a large pile of dung. And uh, so immediately I got uh, the heebie-jeebies like I was being watched. And uh, that's when I decided I would put down my canoe, get my bear spray on, not freaked out, but just, you know, aware that uh, there's pot potentially big cats in our midst. And now, yeah, here's that scat right here. Big fresh pile. I just poked it with a stick a little earlier and it's nice and soft. So uh, I don't know exactly what animal that is, but uh, it's not a small animal. So could very well be a cougar. I like to think the cougar saw me single carrying on that last portage and was like, yeah, I ain't messing with that dude. I didn't see any cougars, but maybe a cougar saw me. Map, we're up here, but it's only a few kilometers away. Cougar. We've entered the water system that flows into the Kopka River. One more portage will be on the river itself. Yar! Trail booty! I spot something. A life jacket? Huh. Hopefully there's no body attached to it. Oh my god, it's full of water. Okay, well I guess we'll haul it back to camp and take a look. You see this? It's a big, it's a backpack. There's a canoe that didn't make it. There's a hole in it. Probably got swept down that, that falls with that child in the backpack. <laughs> I'm joking. After it, but caught it with the fish <laughs> Rocks are slippery. Wet rocks, slippery. Whole dang backpack. It has a 
tag on it so we could actually return it. France! Honestly, I'm just gonna dry out all this stuff so it's like, dry it out so it's like light enough. And then I'm just gonna throw it in the garbage bag and then bring it out of here. I think I could get this back to him. Be eating food from a bag. Cause we're living in the future. That encounter with that bear today was so interesting. Had we left just a few minutes sooner or later today, just probably even a few minutes, we wouldn't have crossed paths with that, that bear. In fact, this trip would be way different had we even come out on a different day. And uh, that was almost the case. In fact, this trip almost didn't even happen. See, on the drive up here, I'm in the, the midst of a two-day drive. The, the first day I slept in the truck, and then the second day as I'm north of Lake Superior, I start to lose cell phone service as I'm heading up towards Armstrong to uh, meet up with the outfitter to catch the train the next day. And uh, Google Maps starts taking me on some old forestry roads. <laughs> the GPS took me on a, on a weird route. And uh, I'm in the forerunner. So I'm quite confident in it. And I've been down crappier roads and lesser vehicles, so I'm pretty confident that I got this. And I was enjoying myself, splashing through puddles, just enjoying the capabilities of the Forerunner. But then I got a little bit cocky and a little bit too confident. And I started going too quick. And I felt the front right tire starting to move weird, sluggishly and didn't feel right, so I thought it was popped. I'm like, uh oh, this isn't good. So I hop out. Oh no. And uh, it wasn't just popped. The entire tire was crooked and bent inwards onto the, the frame of the, the truck, rendering the car immobilized. The, the truck was stuck there. I'm uh, 60 kilometers up this forestry road and about an hour away from my destination without cell phone service in the middle of nowhere. It was not a good place to be in. Fortunately, I had my inReach on me. So uh, I used the inReach to contact the outfitter, let him know what was going on. And then I contacted my brother, Max, and he was able to use my CAA and get a tow truck. And uh, I just hung out. I hung out for, for the better part of 12 hours, took a little schnooze in the truck, and then uh, Michael came, the, the tow truck diver. Uh, great guy, super helpful. He, uh, he wakes me up, and uh, you know we're on this really narrow road. We had to get the truck on his bed. So he had to turn the truck around, and this is like a really narrow forestry road with no turnarounds. But fortunately, there's a little bit of space where he could turn around. And as he was turning around, this is 2 a.m., he's uh, it's pitch black, his back tires go just over this ditch. And then they start spinning as he's trying to pull forward. And so his truck was stuck now. So we had to use the chains that you use to lash down the truck to put underneath the tires to use as grip for the back wheels and he was able to get out, oh turn God. the truck around nice. and uh, that was a, a really scary moment. So we got the truck up on the bed of the tow truck. Now uh, there's your problem. <laughs> got out of there, he drove me all the way up to Armstrong where finally met up with the outfitter. All right, made it, made it to the outfitters exactly 12 hours after my car broke down. Michael was awesome. I'm gonna unload my stuff and then he's gonna take this thing to uh, Thunder Bay where it's gonna get repaired over the course of the time where I'm in the woods. I stayed at the outfitters that night to get on the train that morning. Michael took my truck all the way back down to Thunder Bay where it still is in the shop. Yeah, I got on the train the next morning after like two hours of sleep and that's why the first morning I was absolutely so strung out and so beat up because uh, yeah, that the day before I was dealing with all that, that, uh, that, that goofiness. I could have been on a train three days later, but um, yeah, it would have been a different trip. And uh, it was potentially a trip ending uh, 
scenario too. Just happy to be here. Good morning, everyone. I slept well. Oh. How you? How'd you sleep? Did you sleep? <laughs> okay. So gross. <laughs> this is all that stuff. It still weighs a ton, but less heavy than it was before. It's nice knowing that the longest portages are behind me, but unfortunately the steepest and most treacherous are yet to come. that falls. I'm sure somebody would love to run this in their kayak. It's like a big slide. into my cave. Not bad living in here if you're a cave troll. Sleep right there. You know, you get a little bit of a waterfall coming out here when it rains. Keep your dead fish and you know animal corpses over there. A lot of wood up there to make little clubs for your for your uh, troll activities. Yeah good stuff. Rugged. Can't say I've ever been in anything like this in my canoe. Yeah, I just got word that the part that they're trying to, they needed to get this, a steering knuckle off a scrap car because my truck's 25 years old and uh, the part still hasn't been pulled or delivered to the shop yet, so. It's really down on the wire because I need that truck tomorrow morning so I can get out of here. Oh, 
decided to triple carry because I, I fell twice with the canoe. Not hard, but just a little. These rocks are slippery and it's hazardous. Yeah, I mean, those were some solid portages. I think we're done with the tough ones for the trip. One or two more left for the day, but they're not nearly as bad. Means we're on our way. Let's check out what uh, all this steep gradient is about. Truck is ready! Woo! Truck is ready, and they're gonna tow it back up here. So, we're getting out of here tomorrow. Pretty cool to be at the end of a, a long trip. Pretty satisfying sense of accomplishment. Having completed a task. What did I gain? Gotta eat some fish, held some memories. Honestly, just more of a desire to go more remote. Hooking into that really large pike that I didn't land makes me just wanna go deeper because I bet the fish are just large and abundant. I also gained a lot of introspection time. Great time to train the brain, you know, when you're all alone. Wonderful trip. The Allen water with its rapids and the rain. That first camp was so dingy and tough. I was so beat. Awesome fishing, walleye, northern lights, the otters, the bear, waterfalls, so many beautiful things. Lone time is nice. I think next time though I'm ready to go out with some friends and family, maybe share some memories together, you know. That's next time. We still gotta finish off this trip. This trip is far from done. Still need to finish it and get my truck back. So. Hopefully that works out. <sighs> Anyways, I am absolutely pooped, so I'm heading to bed and uh, see you guys in the morning. Morning! Rain! Can you, can you hear it? It's raining. I couldn't get the truck towed up here, unfortunately, but uh, the outfitter agreed to give me a, a lift down to Thunder Bay, and we'll be on our merry way. It's funny that of all the challenging things that you can encounter on one of these trips, sometimes the most challenging parts of it aren't even the trip itself. They're the organization of the trip. They're the getting to the trip. They're the car difficulties. You know, I could single carry all my gear and my canoe over miles of portaging any day, any day. But when it comes to outside life, outside these trips, it's where the real challenge is. Out here, things are pretty simple. 
I like that. Bruce knows who this backpack is, so he's gonna get it back to them. Quick stop at the Outfitters for a hot shower and some soup, and then down to Thunder Bay. Back at Thunder Bay. There's my truck just ahead. Hey baby, I missed you. Oh yeah. Hey man, I was just, I just did this like long trip and it's been like a really long day with driving and I got another 12 hours to get back to Toronto and I was just wondering if maybe I could possibly like crash on your couch or something. Just like maybe sleep on, sleep on the couch or mm, on the no, ground? No, never, no? never.